Welcome to the Quick Hitter version of the Mike Wise Show. I'm joined by my producer, Bruce Bernstein, and we discussed how becoming a black coach in the NBA, wherever you are and whoever you're coaching, it's not a story anymore. And that's good for all of us. The Celtics are hiring Ime Udoka. Yes. Ime Udoka is their new head coach. Do we like this move, Bruce Bernstein? I do. I mean, I was I was kind of hoping for Chauncey, but I think, you know, Ime has had a number of years working for Greg Popovich. Okay. He was on their right. bench for a while. Uh, he was in Brooklyn, I believe, this past year on Steve Nash's staff. I, I, I think I got that right. Anyway. Well, his, well, he made his bones, though, under uh, Popovich, didn't he, in San Antonio? Yeah, yeah. yeah, he was on their bench for seven years working with yeah. Pop. So, um, look, when you have that sort of a, a coaching pedigree behind you, and apparently he has already had relationships with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Uh, they had, uh, it just strikes me as, as, as a good move. He's got a, a good, you know, he's got a good coach as his boss in Brad Stevens. So yeah. he should, he should have a pretty good idea of the situation he's taken over the ownership group in Boston's good. So I feel like, you know, Boston is definitely going to, you know, kind of you know reboot after this past miserable season and again we were talking about cj mccollum a few minutes ago there's some talk that portland might consider something like uh marcus smart and tristan thompson for cj mccollum i don't know that the money what, what do you think of getting marcus smart what are you get, getting rid of him he's kind of a glue guy marcus smart is the emotional engine of that team but you know yeah. what if you you know he's going to be in the last year of his contract coming up and I will always and love C. Marcus C. Yeah, C.J. McCollum's a talent. Yeah, I mean, and C.J. McCollum has three years left on his deal. You know, it's a big money yeah. deal. He's getting around 30 a year. Uh, but C.J. McCollum, I think, is the kind of guy, after playing with Damian Lillard and then doing very well in that role, I think he's not going to have any problem at all being like a second fiddle to, to Jason Tatum uh, and maybe even a third fiddle to Jalen Brown. So, um Boston just has to kind of mix things up a little bit. You know, they, yeah. they got this young guy, Moses Brown. They brought back Al Harford, who's really kind of towards the end of his career, but but is going to provide the kind of leadership that team, you know, locker room leadership they needed. So I feel pretty good about, about what the Celtics are doing there. And again, you know how it is. When, when you've worked for Greg Popovich, you know how to play the game the right way, as our buddy Larry Brown would say. I, I think one of the great things we haven't even mentioned is, and I, I think because – we're at a point now where the first and the next aren't as big anymore. And so we're getting to a point where hiring an African-American coach or um, a Nigerian American coach in, in the way he may Adoka, like it, it, it's really immaterial in many ways. He, he is, is he the first black coach the Celtics have hired since Casey Jones? No, they had Doc Rivers. Oh, duh. Duh. Okay. So since Doc Rivers, that's a while ago. Yeah, it's like eight years. I mean, uh, so um, but OK, so after but I was just thinking the other day, like like it is pretty amazing. We already talked about that, like one of the Western Conference, one of the one of the NBA finals coaches is going to be a black coach. It's going to be Ty Lue or um, Monty Williams. And if somehow Nate McMillan's Hawks came back and beat the be, I can't even remember when a, a black coach faced off against another black coach in the NBA finals. Uh, Might have you know, been. That, I mean, but nobody's talking. What I think is cool is nobody's talking about it because not not that I don't think it's worthy of mentioning, especially when it get when if it if something like that occurs. What I what I'm getting at is, you know, it's like the shoot the NFL defensive end that came out last week as gay for the Raiders Carl a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and he's like, sort of, look, I'm not an attention getter. I just think that representation and inclusion is big, and I, I that's why I'm that's why I'm throwing this out there. And and I hope we get to a point where nobody has to make these videos, and it's not a big deal to come out. And I think that that's where we almost are with um, black coaches in the NBA, aren't we? Well, I mean, look, I mean, Bill Russell was the first black coach. Yes, he was a player coach, but that was more than 50 years ago. I mean, he took over yeah. after Red Auerbach retired after the 65, 66 season. OK, and Boston, I think this is their sixth head coach. I mean, they've had Bill Russell. They've had 
Satch Sanders, they've had Casey Jones, they've had Duck Rivers, they've had ML Carr, they had somebody else, I, I think, or, or maybe Udoka's the sixth head coach. Yeah. And maybe he's the guy. So, yeah, I mean, it's like the black NFL quarterback thing. It's like, you know what? Who cares? You know, right. it's like Chris Mullen told us when you you had him on a couple of years ago and you were asking him, hey, did you ever think of yourself as the great white hope or did people call He's there, listen, I grew up in Brooklyn. All that mattered was, could you play or could you not play? Yeah. Can you coach or can you not coach? Bird told me the same thing once over yeah. like when I interviewed him when I was shoot 25 years old in the last year of his career he said I go he goes you know it don't matter <laughs> he's the way he said it was much yeah. better it don't matter if you're from Kuwait or French Lick if you grow to six nine and you can handle the ball and shoot it a little bit you can pretty much play anywhere <laughs> well I think the whole the the whole African-American coach thing is now sort of like I don't even look at it and I haven't for a while but but the next one is going to be who will hire the first female coach. Is it going to be Becky Hammond? Is it going to be uh, Teresa Weatherspoon? Is it going to be, you know, uh, Sarah Lawson, Sarah Lawson. Uh, that one is going to take a whole lot of courage from a team president and a general manager that will make. You think that so? I do. I don't know. I, I, I don't know anymore. I, I, I mean, I think it's a risk in that the person you want them to, you have to put them in a, in a place to succeed. Like, like, like if you're taking over a bad team and you're a female coach, I think that's a recipe for disaster. I mean, I think that was the same with hiring black coaches back in the day. I, I remember Butch Beard got the New Jersey Nets. They were the most dysfunctional team of all time. I don't know if Bruce uh, Butch Beard could have became a, a great NBA head coach or a good one or a bad one, but you didn't know because that was not the franchise that Butch Beard needed to start with. Um, the problem, he brought, and, and he wasn't going to get another shot after that, unfortunately. Well, see, here, here's, here's what, you know, what happened. I mean, you know this better than anybody. When a team fires a coach and brings in a new coach, it's usually because they either a have a bad team or B just had a bad season. So, you know, Anybody who's taking over, who's getting their first head coaching job generally is getting a quote unquote bad situation. So you really, that's why I say you really have to have a, a, a good front office who has a plan, who's not going to, you know, panic if the team starts out two and 10 and the fans are on Twitter saying, why did they hire this woman? She can't coach it. That's why I say it's going to take courage. It's going to take a lot of balls for, a, for a management of a team to to give uh, a female head coach a chance but you know what somebody's no it's gonna you know what it's gonna first. take it's what's gonna that? take what's that for a for a team to hire a female head coach it's gonna take a lot of uterus <laughs> you know what else it's gonna take it's gonna it take the star player I, I, I didn't think we were going anatomy on this conversation oh, I, uh, oh, yeah. but it is it's pretty gonna wild take the like star we always player do. on that yeah. team publicly yeah. saying i support i supported hiring her whoever her might be and that's you know that's not easy you know it's going to be tough i think it will happen i i know it will happen at some point i just i guess the next barrier bro, i guess the next barrier broken will be sports a sports writer hired to actually coach an nba team that that will be a barrier that probably stays for a while i gotta think it's just me and what if it's a female sports writer? I think Barbie Barker could handle that. What do you think? You Barbie, think Barbie could... oh, Barb would be great. Oh, Barb wouldn't take any crap either. It'd be great. She'd He'd be, be so like, good. you know, you guys are running suicides today. You got out yeah. of the last night. Go. If you want to hear more, check out the full version of the Mike Wise Show from Pure Hoops Media. <laughs> you can also see the video version of the Quick Hitter on the Pure Hoops Media YouTube channel.